In this demo, we're looking at explosions. Um, always exciting. Uh, we have two equal mass carts set sort of in the middle of this track. And when I press the button in between them, a little plunger pushes, pops out and pushes them. Um, and so if I synchronize the data I collected, and this is just position and velocity, data position on the top, velocity at the bottom, and we watch what happens, right? When they explode, right, we get um, in the position, we get two lines in, with opposite slopes, but pretty much the same magnitude of slope. And we can check that by looking at the velocity after the explosion, we have about 0.5 meters per second for the yellow cart and negative 0.5 for the green cart. Um, so equal masses, they explode, the total momentum should be zero, and it is because they have equal and opposite momentum. Uh, a couple of things to notice that the position graph tells you a lot of things. Um, you know, the straight lines tell you that the velocity is pretty much constant. We have a pretty much horizontal line here, starting with zero velocity, positive and negative after the explosion. So there's a few different things we can look at here and see. In this second scenario, you'll notice I've added some masses to the yellow cart. So it's more massive and therefore after the explosion, it's going more slowly. That's why I put it closer to the end stop so they kind of hit at about the same time. Um, seeing that the green covers a lot more distance because it's going a lot faster. If we watch the uh, synchronized data collection, we can see that pretty dramatically by looking at the position time graph. We see a shallow positive slope and a pretty steep negative slope for the different magnitudes and directions. Uh, in velocity, we see a similar thing. Obviously, they're slowing down a little bit because of some friction, but they start with zero velocity. Then they jump to a big negative velocity for green because it's got a low mass, big velocity, and a small positive velocity for yellow. Looking again, this time I've switched the mass to the green cart, so it will be the slower one with the bigger mass, and the yellow cart will be moving faster with the smaller mass. We can watch that happen. Right, we can watch that again. And we see a big steep positive velocity um, for the yellow and a shallow or, uh, you know, not very steep negative velocity for the green because of the differences in masses. In this scenario, um, we're on a flat surface, as you can see, but instead of at rest, we're exploding them once they get moving, um, which leads to really interesting results. If we take a look at that, they're moving, we explode them. Um, the car out in front, mass two, uh, speeds up. Car one uh, actually slows down and becomes negative for a bit uh, before it eventually will come to rest due to friction. Um, but so that's the, that's the result we have there, right? We have a relatively constant velocity before uh, for the two and then after for the others. Uh, but because they're moving already, their separation um, does not go about the time axis. Another scenario where we're on a flat surface giving an initial velocity. Again, I've put the masses in the uh, second cart. So mass two is more massive. And the big difference here is that um, the amount that the momentum changes of the impulse or, you know, on either one will still be the same, but we get a more dramatic change in the velocity of the light car or mass one than we do with mass two. Our final explosion scenario here, we're on that flat surface. I'm giving them an initial velocity, but this time mass one, the green cart is gonna be the more massive one. You can see that here. Um, so if we go ahead and jump back and watch this, you know, give them a little push, explode them. Uh, notice the light cart out in front gets the big change of velocity, whereas the green one just slows down a bit. Um, again, you know, we see the two carts moving together, and then the big positive slope and the uh, slightly smaller positive slope for the green cart. Um, that kind of is all these different scenarios that might help you think about what an explosion would look like, um, you know, whether there's a net external force or not on the system. Now we've changed the scenario a little bit. We've got carts rolling down a ramp, which means the force of gravity in part is apply, applying a net external force to the system. So the whole system 
will be accelerating, which is an interesting thing. So we can see that happen if we just watch the video. It's rolling down, and then I explode them as they're partway down there. Uh, we can do this with the whole thing, watching the data come along as it goes, and then as they explode, well, that didn't really work too well. We can watch it again. Um, right in real time you see that in all the cases it's a little harder to see on the yellow after the explosion but in all cases we have a curve right um, we see a distinct positive sloping line for all three segments before when they're moving together um, the yellow after the explosion and the green even though the green uh, gets negative velocity right here it's slowing down while heading in the negative direction well the yellow is speeding up in the positive. In all of these cases, we have, you know, an acceleration that is external to the system. Um, that's two um, carts that are of equal mass, right? In this case, um, it's maybe a little hard to see that. But if you look at the explosion, you can see that although one goes positive and one goes negative, sort of the spacing away from where they were before the explosion is sort of the same. That's because they're equal mass. So once again, rolling down the ramp with that net external force on the system due to gravity, um, you know, you'll notice that the, the green cart, what we're calling mass one, um, always the one on the left, uh, has more mass than the yellow cart. And so as they roll down, we'll get a different result. Um, you may not have seen it right there. I'll do it again. But you will notice that the green cart slows down it doesn't ever stop and the yellow cart accelerates. And we can see that on our velocity time graph, right? The yellow cart, both of them were accelerating. Then the yellow cart goes much faster after the collision and keeps on accelerating. The blue cart or green cart slows down, but never fully stops. Um, it doesn't or changes direction. It never quite gets down across the axis there. And then, of course, we have three segments uh, that are curved, showing that there is a, an acceleration. And they're curved up, showing a positive acceleration.